Gotta have that 16 inch, baby. I've been dreaming about this 14 inch MacBook Pro for at least 10 years and it's finally here. Honestly, I never thought I'd say it, but I'm all over the 16 inch. I use the 14 inch MacBook Pro and I love it. Morning, another day, another real world test. Today, we're doing it on the Apple MacBook Pro 16 inch, the big boy. Now, I already did a video on the Apple MacBook Pro 14 inch, and if you saw that video, I apologize in advance, there's gonna be a little bit of overlap because there's a lot of similarities between these two devices. But I wanted to make a video because I think a lot of people are having an issue trying to decide between the 14 and the 16. I just wanna see if we can run some tests and clarify some of that, all while, you know, exploring my hood. But First things first. Coffee. Check. Honestly, I got this espresso machine from my dad. It was a really nice present for Christmas. And I have to say, I have even more respect for baristas than I already did. It is hard to make a good shot of espresso, but I now finally have gotten it to a point where it's drinkable. I wouldn't even say it's the best. It's just, I can drink it without hating it. I clearly need more practice, but. We'll see. Now I've been using the new MacBook Pros since they came out in October. I used the 14 for a long time, which I really, really like. We'll talk about that later. But I've been using this 16 inch now for at least a couple of months. I feel like now I've had enough time where I can properly talk about both of them and how they differ, etc. But real quick, let's first talk about like the design of the new MacBooks and the 16 inch model in particular. The designs on both models are more squared off. It's actually kind of reminiscent of the original MacBook Pro. In my opinion, it matches the newer generation of iPhones actually. And frankly, I like it. It's very like minimalistic and modern, kind of all about that. They also both have black keyboard wells, again, like the original MacBook Pro. And I just like that it gives it a more unique look. Now that keyboard is clicky and good to type on, way better than the old butterfly ones. And the trackpad is good, it's as you would expect, on a MacBook. But something interesting between the MacBook Pro 16 and the MacBook Pro 14 is that the 16 has a larger trackpad than the 14. I don't really notice it being like more helpful. I don't like run out of room on the also large 14 inches trackpad, but it's it's just interesting. Honestly, like I wonder if they did it just to like aesthetically balance it a little bit more. Now ports on both laptops are the same. In the number of them is one of the reasons that I would recommend either of these over the 13 inch Pro to any professional creative who like works off of hard drives that need to be plugged in or uses a camera with an SD card as its memory card. Not having to use dongles seems like such a small thing, but honestly it's like one or many less things that you have to carry and that many things that you are less likely to also lose is just, Freeing. And lastly for the design, we have the screen, which on both models is mini LED. And bottom line, it gets plenty bright for me to see outside and the contrast and color is one of the best on a computer that I've used in a long time. Now on the 16 inch model, of course, we have a 16.2 inch screen compared to the 14.2 inch screen of the 14 inch model. And now we do have a notch on both models, but having stared at the notch now for over three months, it doesn't bother me. And funny enough, if you put the MacBook Pro 16 inch new model next to the MacBook Pro 16 inch Intel model, the chassis is basically the same size, but you gain the 0.2 inches in the space where the bezel would be, except for the notch. And as someone who like tries to be an optimist most of the time, I feel like I'm gaining screen everywhere besides where the notch is, as opposed to like losing some screen to the notch, if, if that makes sense. Now, some people have said that the menu bar sometimes extends and hides behind the notch, which obviously would be an issue. But all the programs I've used either don't have enough menu items to hit the notch, so I don't know, or when they do, they actually just jump over to the other side so they're not being blocked by the notch. And as much as this kind of feels weird that Apple did this and maybe we'll have like a face ID type of thing in there down the road, I honestly kind of feel like Apple just did it to make the device even more recognizable, just kind of like they do with iPhones. It's even to the point where you could recognize both of these devices, even in icon form. I don't think that's a coincidence, right? Now, what if 16 inches is not large enough of a display for you? What about maybe over 100 inches? Well, 
That's where today's sponsor comes in. This is the Xjimmy Horizon Pro, and it's a true 4K projector that can produce crisp images in sizes even up to 300 inches. It's also ultra bright with 2200 ANSI lumens, so you can see sharp and detailed images even in bright light. Now with dual eight watt Harman Kardon speakers, it can deliver cinematic sound for your movies, but also can be used as a standalone Bluetooth speaker in case you need some Beethoven to amp you up for your day. <laughs> And it's smart with intelligent screen adjustment that can do keystone correction, automatically focus the screen, correct the size of the projection to match the surface it's pointed at, and even has automatic obstacle avoidance. Kinda crazy. But check out the Horizon Pro at the link below. Thanks again to XJimmy for sponsoring this video. Okay, that was the part where I would normally have sat at the cafe and continued to talk about the laptop, but it's gross out. And so we're back in my filming studio, but that place is called Little Neck Outpost. And one, they make way better lattes than me, not that hard. And two, they have some of the best egg sandwiches in the neighborhood. This is the chorizo egg avocado chipotle mayo sandwich mess deliciousness. It's so messy, but it's so good. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about some of the similarities that are of note between these laptops, but let's dive a little bit more into the differences. Now, when I switched from the 14 inch originally, the 16 inch felt and looked massive by comparison. And it is a decent chunk larger. It is 4.7 pounds instead of the 3.5 of the 14 inch, so about 34% heavier. And it's over an inch longer and almost two inches wider and even a little thicker. Switching between them is jarring in either direction. But of course, with the larger size, we do get some benefits. So firstly, there is a lot more real estate on the screen. They both have a usable area that is a 16 by 10 display, but as you can see, more fits on the 16 inch display versus the 14 inch, which can be helpful if you're multitasking or even just using photo and video editing programs to just get a bit more room. A nice benefit with that extra room is there's more room for more battery. So the MacBook Pro 16 has a 100 watt hour battery. Technically that's the limit that's allowed on planes. And so it's kind of unofficially become the limit that manufacturers will put in their laptops. And the MacBook Pro 14 has a 70 watt hour battery. And during my own testing, that was not a benchmark. I edited a video in DaVinci Resolve, which is the editing program that I use because it works across Windows and Mac and everything equally. And I did that for about an hour on the top spec 14 inch model and the top spec 16 inch models. And I lost 18% on the MacBook 14. So that translates to about 5.55 hours I could have edited this particular project. And I lost 12% on the MacBook 16. So that translates to about 8.33 hours of editing this type of a project. So like doing that math, we lost 12.6 watt hours and 12 watt hours respectively, which makes sense as those are similar amounts of battery drained. But of course the 16 inch has 88 watt hours remaining compared to the 14's 57.4 watt hours remaining. Now true is I'm using video editing as a example here because it is the more intense thing that I do in my workflow and the thing where I've actually started to notice differences between laptops for performance. Now photo editing, and surfing the web, you're not gonna notice as much of a difference. But the thing that you're doing and how power intensive it is, is obviously going to affect the battery more or less. So here's my battery usage on both of these laptops while sitting and just working at a cafe for an hour on each, just kind of surfing the web, writing, that kind of stuff. Okay, now before we get into performance tests to see if there's a big difference between these two laptops in that regard, there's one more thing battery wise actually that is different about the two laptops. And that's that they both can do quick charging via MagSafe. And here is my data for that. But apparently the 14 inch is the only one of the two that supports USB-C fast charging. So instead of using the MagSafe charger, actually plugging in directly into the USB-C ports. And so here's me charging both of them via USB-C using the same charger with the same output and how much battery each gained in 15 minutes. Okay, performance. Okay, now I already did a ton 
of real world video editing tests on the MacBook Pro 14 top spec model. And here's how that did. Okay, but now let's talk about any real world performance differences between the MacBook Pro 14 top spec and the MacBook Pro 16 top spec. As far as the real world, like playing back of footage, how well can it actually handle my workflow of editing some pretty intense video footage? It did it exactly the same, or at least there was no noticeable difference. But now let's try some rendering and exporting uh, stuff that might take longer so that we'll maybe see a performance difference in like sustained performance, maybe. So exporting a 4K video on both. Now this is the exact same full project with color correction effects, everything I needed to finish the video. And the 16 did it in eight minutes and eight seconds and it lost 3% of its battery or three watt hours. While the 14 did it in eight minutes and 39 seconds and lost 8% or 5.6 watt hours. And that's actually kind of interesting because again, these are both the exact same spec. It's the same project, the same editing program, everything else is the same. But the 16 did it in a bit less time and used less battery. Maybe there is something to the whole better thermals in the larger one thing. But there is one more thing that I want to test on the 16 inch model, and that's max power mode. Now, according to people on the internet, this is like a more power mode, like more performance. And maybe it has something to do with the thermals, like Apple thinks that the thermals are better. Clearly they probably are. And so they allow you to do this mode. Whereas on the 14, they don't allow you to, which actually does sound very Apple-esque. But let's see if I turn the 16 onto this max power mode and re-render that exact same video. Let's see how it does. Now, again, it did it in eight minutes and eight seconds and it lost 3% of its power without max power mode. And with, it did it in eight minutes and seven seconds and it lost 5% of its power. Okay, now deciding between the MacBook Pro 14 and the MacBook Pro 16. Well, when you first look at the prices, the base models, it looks like there's actually a bigger gap than there really kind of is because the MacBook Pro 14 base is $2,000 and the MacBook Pro 16 base is $2,500. But it's not really an apples to apples comparison because you would have to bump up the 14 inch model to the 10 core CPU and 16 core GPU. And when you do that, you're looking at a $200 difference. And for that extra $200, what do people say you get and what do you actually get? Firstly, the speakers, maybe they're a tiny bit better, but there's a very slim chance that I think you're gonna notice that. So don't think of that. Also the max power boost, as we've seen, like doing most things is going to just drain your battery a little faster and not really add much to the performance. Now, of course, if you were in that very small percentage of people who is, I don't know, trying to render a giant 3D scene, maybe there'll be a bit more of a difference. It really comes down to a few things. Firstly, battery life. It definitely has better battery life than the 14. It just has a bigger battery and it even charges faster thanks to its charger, which as we saw, I've tested on the 14 and doesn't actually charge the 14 any faster than it's 96 watts. So that's just kind of the limit that it can take. And then performance. Surprising to me even during this video, there is a, a decent amount of performance difference, at least doing my workflow and the longer parts of my workflow, like 90% of what I do, I wouldn't notice, but like that rendering at the end, it, it does make a difference. As an aside though, I will say, as we've seen in the data that I've presented, the MacBook Pro 14 base model, the $2,000 model, is probably plenty for most people out there. And so if there is a budget constraint here, just kind of keep that in mind. And lastly, screen size, obviously, but it does have a decent amount more that fits on the screen. So for me, the priority is less on that little extra performance or that extra battery life when it's already so good. It's gonna be on having less weight and uh, just being more portable. So I'll probably be going back to my 14 after this video. But you guys let me know, would you go for the 16 and just max everything out or do you care more about portability? Let me know in the comments below. Always appreciate hearing from you guys. I'll leave links below to the best deals that I can find on these laptops. Shout out again to xJimmy for sponsoring this video. I'll leave a link down to check out their projector. As always though, regardless, thanks for watching. This lens is so wide, I have to cover it with two hands to end the scene. Like I can, one hand doesn't fit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's so gross. The amount of time that I spend just like cleaning my laptop just so that I can film it 
is ridiculous. Am I the only one? My laptop is the, the easiest way to tell how disgusting I truly am every time I open it. I don't, how, how does it get this dirty? <laughs> Truck. Truck. When your filming studio is on a highway, basically. Between the trucks and the heater, the radiant heat that we have in here. And neighbors, they just dropped something. I can tell. Hope they're okay. 